Hi, I'm Gareth and in this video we're going to consider the topic of enharmonics, which sounds complicated but really is not as complicated as you might think. And it's really come out of a number of questions that people have asked, so I hope we can sort this out. Now, the question that people keep asking is, why do you call a note A sharp when you could call it B flat? Or even more strangely, why do you call a note E sharp when you could call it F? Now that's a perfectly reasonable question. And the first thing to say about it is that every note has got more than one name. So if we take the note C, well, most of us know this is C, but it could be B sharp because there's B just below it and the note C is a semitone above it. So apart from being C, it's also C sharp. C is also D double flat. Let's think about that. Here's D. So a semitone beneath D is D flat. A semitone beneath that is C, but it's also D double flat. So even though most people will know this note most commonly as C, it's also known as B sharp it's also known as D double flat. And we could go through a whole load of other notes, uh, drawing attention to the fact that it's possible to have these three names for a note. But why does that come about? Well, it's all about keys and scales. So you know that when you write a piece of music or play a piece of music in a particular key, you're using the notes of that scale. So for example, the first scale I've got on the board here is a scale of F major. So if you were playing a piece in the key of F major or writing a piece, you'd expect to be using B flat. Okay, why do we use B flat? Because thinking through what we just said, this note is B flat, but it could be A sharp, couldn't it? So why don't I call it A sharp? Well, if you think about it, in any scale, you have one of each letter. So before we think about sharps and flats, we've got F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. So we've got one of each letter starting on F, finishing on F. Now, if I were to call this note A sharp, can you see what would happen? I'd end up with two kinds of A's. I'd have an A natural and an A sharp, and then I wouldn't have any kind of B. Does that matter? Well, at one level, no, but another level, it would be a little bit of a headache, wouldn't it, for composers? Because if you had the note A and A sharp in the same scale, the same key, every time you want to write the note A, you've got to indicate, well, is it A natural or is it A sharp? Whereas in fact, if you call this one A and you call the next one B flat, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? And you can put your B flat in the key signature and then the player knows that every time he or she bumps into B, it's a B flat. Every time they bump into A, it's A. They're not looking at A and A sharp and then every time they come to A thinking, oh, I wonder if this one's A or A sharp. It just makes it much more confusing. So if you work on the principle that you need one of each letter of the scale, that then determines that this has to be called B flat. It's not going to be called A sharp. It could, of course, be called C double flat because this is C and B is C flat. So B flat is also C double flat. But again, there's no logic in that because then we'd have a C double flat and a C. So there's no point in doing that. But you can see in this next scale that I've scribbled out, B major, well, you know, we've got something different going on here, haven't we? Because we had a B flat there, but in B major, the same note is A sharp. And you can see why, for the same reason. B major, one of each letter, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. And so B, C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B. Now, if you're worried about, well, how do I know that I need all these sharps in the scale of B major, have a look at our video on the circle of fifths that makes the whole key thing perfectly obvious and explains the whole system. Um, but in any major scale, you always have the same pattern. So if I go back to F major, it always goes tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. So that gives me the notes. If I start on B, tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. So every major scale goes tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. 
So that really tells you why we need those sharps, but you can see why I'm calling that A sharp here and not B flat, as we called that B flat. If I call this B flat, well, I've then got B flat and B natural, I've got no kind of A. So it's kind of quite logical and neat once you understand why we would do this. Now we call this enharmonics, just to return to that original word. So you can say that if B flat and A sharp are the same note as each other, you can say that B flat and A sharp are enharmonic equivalents. In other words, it sounds exactly the same, but it looks different. If it's B flat, it looks like this. If it's A sharp, it looks like this. But A sharp, B flat, same note but you can see why. So here's another example. So here I am in C sharp major, and this is where people really start asking questions because in C sharp major, if I go tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone, I end up with all the notes having to be sharp. I've got one of each kind, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, but follow the pattern, tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone, they all end up sharp. C sharp, D sharp, E sharp, F sharp, G sharp, a sharp, B sharp, C sharp. And I've had a few people write to me recently saying, well, I don't understand why you're talking about E sharp and B sharp because they don't exist. Well, I'm afraid they do exist. And now hopefully you can see why. I'm not gonna call this F, am I? Because I'm gonna have C sharp, D sharp, F natural, F sharp. And then I'm back in that same problem again, aren't I? If, when I'm playing the piece, am I playing F? Am I playing F sharp? But this way it's much easier to see it as E sharp. And there's a logic in calling that E sharp. Same with the B sharp here, because B sharp, you think, well, if I'm gonna play B sharp, surely that's C. Yes, it is. It's an enharmonic equivalent of C. It sounds exactly like C, but it's an enharmonic equivalent. That's a B sharp. By the way, some people would say, well, it doesn't sound exactly the same. Often string players say that, that they say, well, when I'm playing C, I've just got it tuned very slightly differently from playing B sharp. Absolute little bit of fine tuning there. Well, uh, that's probably true. I don't dispute it for a moment. If you're playing it on the piano, well, it's the same note, isn't it? It feels different because it has a sort of different status within the key. I think that's the important thing to recognize. But you can see why B sharp is an enharmonic equivalent of C, but why it has to be B sharp in this scale. E sharp is an enharmonic equivalent of F, but it has to be E sharp in this scale. And then I've just tucked at the bottom here a minor scale. I've put the scale of G sharp minor, just to make another point that comes out of this really. Same principle, one of each note, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But what happens in this scale, it's not following the pattern tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone, because it's a minor scale, all right? But this is how the scale goes. G sharp, A sharp, B, C sharp, D sharp, E. So we definitely need some kind of F. When you're writing a harmonic minor scale, which is what this is, you take the seventh note and you raise it a semitone. Well, in G sharp minor, the seventh note is F sharp. So if I raise it, it has to become F double sharp, which is what this X sign means. So that seems even more crazy, doesn't it? Because you're gonna look at that and think, well, why not call it G? For the same reasons as I've explained up here. We need some kind of F in the sequence of notes, and we've got G sharp coming up just around the corner there. So this has to be some kind of F. Because it was F sharp, and I've raised it a semitone, we have to call it F double sharp, when we're in the key of G sharp minor. So I hope that explains it because it's a question that a number of people have asked, which is a really good legitimate question. And I've noticed teaching over the years, the number of people who say to me, why does this composer make life so difficult and writes F double sharp in this piece when he could have called it G? Well, hopefully you can now see that if that piece is in the key of G sharp minor, there's a very good reason why it needs to be called F double sharp. So I hope that clarifies that question of why we sometimes call a note B flat or A sharp, why we might use to need to use a double sharp or a double flat sometimes in order to get the sequence of notes right for the scale 
of the key in which we're working.